sickness and, and a lot of people out and, and uh, calling for prayer. And you just remember those. You can look around and see that we have a lot of people who, who are out sick this morning who are unable to be here. So please pray for them. Amen. Calling and texting. And, and I, I love it when, when people call and text and say, I hate missing my church. But pray for us. We're sick. Amen. So it's our duty to pray for them <clears throat> that they would be restored. Amen. So this morning, though, we want to go to the Word of God. And I <clears throat> I was, y'all excuse me for clearing my throat so much, but uh, I, I was thinking this week about how, yeah, can you open that for me? Thank you. <laughs> um, how, <clears throat> when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I, I, that was just stirring around in my spirit. And in the name of Jesus. And exactly what that means. And I, well, when, when we leave here today, I hope we have a better understanding of what it means to be in the name of Jesus. What does it mean to be in the name of Jesus? First, we're going to start in John the 14th chapter and the 13th verse. John 14, 13. Hallelujah. And Jesus is talking here and he said, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything, say it with me, in my name, I will do it. You may be seated this morning. I know that this, this scripture has been taken out of context so, so, so many times. And a lot of people look at this and say, well, whatever you ask him, he's going to do. Whatever you ask, he's going to do. And that is not what this scripture says. Amen. But he said, whatever you ask in my name. And we're going to delve into that and find out what that means this morning. These are not mere words, okay? To be in the name of Jesus is very different than to say in the name of Jesus. Anybody can say in the name of Jesus, but to be in the name of Jesus is a very different thing. I, 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 we won't go there for time's sake, but you know the story of, of where the, uh, of the, the Sceva Jews were coming and they saw uh, the disciples casting out demons in the name of Jesus and they decided they were going to do the same thing and they thought the power being in the name of Jesus that they could use it. Prime example. And the devil said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know, but who are you? They were not in the name of Jesus. They used the name of Jesus, but they were not in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you today that what, what is wrong with a lot of people who are trying to to live for God and trying to make it through life and trying and, and it's always a struggle and it's always a fight and it's always a it's because they want to use the name of Jesus but they are not in the name of Jesus okay so there's power in that name but the power the word says according to the power that worketh in us so if the name of Jesus if we are not taken on that name and taken on the, the identity of Christ through the blood of Jesus. We are not in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to read this right quick before we before we uh, move on. Uh, the devils were powerless because of his name in Luke 10, 17. The demons were cast out in his name, Mark 16, 17 and 18. Healing occurred in his name in Acts the third chapter and the fourth chapter. Salvation comes in his name, Acts the fourth chapter, Romans the tenth chapter. We are to baptize in his name, Matthew 28. We are justified in his name, 1 Corinthians 6. Everything we do and say is done in his name, Colossians 3 and 17. But it is praying in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to I go through these couple of things here before we get on into the message. What we are saying when we say, I come to you in 
the name of Jesus. How many of you know that when you get married, women, you know, we know that we're the bride of Christ, right? All you men, you're a bride. All you men, you're a bride. You're the bride of Christ when you receive Him. So what happens here when we get married? The first thing that happens is we join to that husband. And we all of a sudden, our name is not what it used to be. Our name changes to His name. And we take on His identity. And as His wife, when I married Ben, I was no longer a Kingsley. I became a Brown. So now legally, my legal name is Brown. That's how I recognize that's who I am. Yeah. Because my name changed. And so everything that he had, I now have. Everything that he has, I now have. I am part of him. He is part of me. We become one flesh, the word says. One flesh. And so I take on his name. So that I am miseries Ben Brown. We take on the name of Jesus Christ when we put on that new man and we receive the blood of Jesus Christ to cover our sins and cleanse us from our sins. We become his bride and we put on his name so that we become in his name. When we go to God in prayer, he does not see us as our former self. He sees me as the bride of of his son Jesus. When he sees me and I come to him in the name of Jesus, it means everything in heaven belongs to me. Because the word says that I'm heirs and joint heirs with Christ. So everything he has, I have. So thus we get the scripture, whatsoever you ask in my name, my father will give it to you. Because I have everything you need and there's nothing you can ask for if you come in my name that I do not give you. I give you everything that you need as long as you come in my name. But what we say when we say, I don't come to you in my name. I don't come to you as who I used to be. Number one, we are admitting the bankruptcy of our own name. I am bankrupt without Jesus. We are bankrupt without Jesus. We have nothing spiritually, nothing physically. We have nothing. We have no help, no hope. We are bankrupt without Jesus. I come boldly before God because of the power in his name. A power in his name. Number two, we identify with the person of Jesus Christ. When what Jesus has literally given us his name to use in the bank of heaven. Amen. He has given us his name. He said there's no other name by which you might be saved. There's no other name given. There is no other name. Not Mohammed. Not Allah. Not Buddha. Not, not, not anybody else they can come up with. You can cry out as the prophets of Baal did. Not Baal. No anybody. But there's one name given by which I can come to God. The God universe and I come to him in that name and I have access to everything that heaven holds as long as I am in the name of Jesus. Amen. In that name. Amen. Yes. We pray in his authority. We pray in his authority. We submit to his will. When we ask in the name of Jesus, when you're in the name of Jesus, it means you have submitted to your will to the will of God. Sure, I might have some uh, some idea of how I would like to see something worked out, or how. But when I come in the name of Jesus, it, when I say, "Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus." In other words, when you look at me, you see your Son Jesus, and whatever His will is, that's what I'm asking for. And so that's what I will receive is the will of God in my life. We submit to His will and His authority. Number five, we are representing Him and His interests here on earth. Number six, I love this. We pray expectantly. Amen. Expectantly. I love this. When we pray in Jesus' name, we may expect the answer in accord to the value of His name. 
God is going to give us an answer that equals the value of the name of Jesus. Whatever he gives to you, you are to treasure that. You are to hold on to that because no man can give you what God has for you and no man can take it away because it comes straight from God. Amen. When we are in the name of Jesus and we are lined up with the will of This is why it's so important. We don't just preach get in the will of God because we want you to march a straight line. Come on now. The word says, forget not the benefits of God. <laughs> if I'm going to have benefits, guess what i got to do? My job. That's right. At work, if you're going to have benefits, you got to be a good employee. you got to be an employee. If you're not, you're going to lose your job. Amen. Right. God's not in the business of firing people, but people sure are in the business of firing him. Right. Because we act like we can just do anything we want to do, anytime we want to do it, and then go home. I want this, or I want that, or I think I need this, or, or I, I want to see this happen, or I want to see that happen, or in the name of Jesus, it is so misused. It's so misused. Oh, it's not uh, 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 just mere words. It is a place. It's not something I say. It's somewhere that I am. In the name. Of Jesus in that precious name. Let's see the results of facing our enemy in the name of the Lord. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. Everybody knows this story. I love it. How many of you know the story of David and Goliath? Everybody knows this story. I don't think anybody raised your hand. Everybody knows the story. Kids, y'all, every one of you know the story of David and Goliath. But I want us to look at something right here. First Samuel, we're going to read uh, 32 through 46. I, I know it's some, but I want to read it here. So y'all just bear with me, okay? Just bear with me right here. Hallelujah. 32 through 46. And 17. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. David had went uh, to carry uh, cheese and, and food out to his brothers. They were on the battlefield and he had left the sheep. His, his father had sent him to, to, to go check on them and make sure that they had food and, and stuff. And he got there and there's this big old ugly giant who has run them in a corner. And he's railing out threatenings to them. And everybody's scared. And David shows up and said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed or tried to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I can't go with these, for I've not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked out and saw David, he was disdained. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. 
Oh, did Goliath underestimate <coughs> the one who was in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you, the enemy has underestimated you when you are in the name of Jesus. I may look weak. I may look like easy prey. I may look like I don't know what I'm doing. And sometimes I might not know what I'm doing. But you better look out because I am in something that will defeat you. I am in the name of Jesus. And David was being made fun of. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. I love this right here. Here's where it is right here. <clears throat> then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Give God and brothers were all in the army. He was the only one who wasn't in the army. He was the only one who got left behind. But isn't it something that he was the only one who was in the name? All of those that were using the name were on the battlefield hiding out, scared to death because of the threatenings and the railings of this giant this one man, this one giant, it seems familiar that, that Elijah was run into a cave by Jezebel after he had done seen God do all these miraculous things. He let one woman run him into a cave. Amen. All of this great army of Israel had backed up because of this one giant who was doing some big talking. Have you ever had the devil to do some big talking to you? Has he ever whispered to you day and night, I will take you, you're going to fail. You're not ever going to be able to live this way. You're not ever going to be able, you can't ever get it right. You don't do anything right. You are always in and out, in and out. And everybody knows you don't stick with it. Now, has he ever said things like that to you? Does it sound familiar? Goliath said, you ruddy looking little runt. Who are you coming against? Man, he was disdained. He couldn't believe that he would even come against him. And he said, I'll feed you to the fowls of the air. I will take you apart and feed you to the fowls of the air. And David answered him back. Sometimes we need that answer back. Amen. We need to answer back and declare where we are in God. Not You don't have to stick your chest out and brag about how many times you go to church or how long you stay in prayer. He ain't worried about all that. Amen. He ain't worried about all that. What he's worried about is where you are with God. Where you are. And David said, I see you sword. I see you shield. And I see you spear. I see all that. I see how big you are. You big and you loud and you ugly and you're armed. I see all that. You come to me with all that. I see it. I'm not denying that there's a problem here. I'm not denying my size. You come to me with all that. But I come to you in the name. In the name. I'm hidden. What you see is not what you get. What you see ain't what you're going to get, buddy. What you're looking at is not what's coming at you. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. I have come to fight you in that name. I have come to fight you. You're looking at what they see when they look at me. You're looking at what everybody else sees when they look at me. But because I got in the 
name of Jesus, I come to you in that name. And I have asked the Lord to give me your head. Come on. And then David declares, I will take your head off today. I know that sounds bad, don't it? We need to take the head of our giant in our life. And the only way we can is by being in the name, not using the name, not saying the name. Oh, the, the name is powerful. Yes, it is. But the word says that it's, it is only as powerful as the power that works in us. In the name of Jesus. He said, I come to you. It, it wasn't his physical condition or position that made him fit. He wasn't even on the battlefield. It was his spiritual position. A couple of chapters earlier, I want you to think about this. David was anointed king. The least among the least didn't even bring him in, but he was anointed king. Let me tell you something. <coughs> David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And I studied that out a little bit and I got to thinking about that. I read some commentary on it and what? The Lord of hosts means is the Lord of all the heavenly armies in control in heaven and on earth. There's nothing in heaven and there's nothing in earth that he cannot conquer, that he is not God. Of. He is the Lord of hosts and I am in his name. I am representing everything that he is, everything that he stands for and he will uphold me with the right hand of his righteousness. He said, I come to you in that name. But David was anointed to be king a couple of chapters earlier. And I began to think about the anointing. And, 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 and here's, here's what he meant when he said, I come to you in that. He said, you're not fighting the little shepherd boy. You're not fighting him. You are fighting God himself. We need to let the devil know today. That's all right. You come with everything you got. I see your spear. I see your sword. I see your shield. I see all your fake stuff. I see all your lies. I see everything coming at me. But what you're looking at, you don't have any idea that you're not fighting this little weak person that you know is going to cower down to you. You're not fighting the sin sick. Bro, lay down. Because apart from God, 
We can do nothing. We can do nothing. I said he was anointed a couple of chapters earlier. The scripture says that the anointing destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Where's my scripture? The anointing destroys the yoke. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. Somebody say today. Today. today that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. Yeah. Right. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. Can I tell you, David was anointed two chapters earlier. God saw when he sent Samuel to anoint him that he was the one because he was in the name. All the rest of the brothers was on the battlefield lined up with all their gear and ready to go. But it was the one who was still tended sheep. That little ruddy, fair, kind of ugly looking little fella that didn't look like he could run a fly off hardly. And he was left back there. But God said, I want you to anoint him because he's in my name. And he is going to be a mighty king. He is going to be. And let me tell you something. The anointing destroys the yoke. We just read the anointing. There's something about being anointed for something in the kingdom of God that there, he could not go down to the battlefield and hear the threat of the enemy and that anointing not be stirred up in him because God had anointed him to have authority and be a king and a mighty man of war and a, a man after God's own heart. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He didn't call him a giant. He called him a Philistine. He didn't even recognize his size. He said, who is that? Who is it? Can you see little David? All the big old men backed up in the corner hiding down. And, and his brothers was mad at him. And he said, it's just your pride. Because see, they was a little bit upset that he was anointed. They were all right. That he got anointed because he was still in the, in the sheep dome and in the, back there. It's all right. But now he showed up over here and they're supposed to be mighty men of war. And here you come. And the Bible says that they accuse him of being prideful. He would show out. Oh, they didn't know how he was fixing to show out. God in him was fixing to bring a great victory. And David said, who is that yeah. to defy the armies of the living God? I'm telling you today, we pass by too many things that when God has placed an anointing on you, you cannot ignore all the things that threaten to take what God has for you. You will get stir something up in you and there is a holy, holy, a, 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 just a holy indignation that rises up and says you will not take what God has right. you will not take my family right. you will not take my children right. you will not take my finances right. you will not take my marriage right. you will not take my job right. you will not take my right. peace my joy my happiness it's all mine it belongs to me because I'm in the name of Jesus and all of those things are in the name of Jesus You forget that I am in the name of Jesus. You're not fighting who you think you're fighting. If you come against me, we ought to everyone be so I'm talking about in tune with God and submit ourselves to God. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves to God. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There's folks that, that are forgetting to submit yourself to God and they're trying to resist and they ain't got nothing to resist with. Because they're not in the name. In the name. Look at somebody say, get in the name. In the name of Jesus. Get in it. I'm telling you, I can stand the 
beside my car till it balls all the pieces and the tires rot off of it and never move and go nowhere. Right. Till I get in it Come on now. <laughs> and move. Come on. I can stand there and say, I got a car. <laughs> Woo, ain't it pretty? That thing looks good. It's sharp. It, let me see. It'll go 160 miles an hour. It'll do it. It'll run. You believe that? It'll run. I can stand, I can walk around it, I can talk about how good it looks, how fast it is, how how expensive it was, how all of this, and how I could go from here to Timbuk Timbuktu and, and, and just get there quicker than anybody else and whatever, and I can stand right there and never move. That's what we're doing, folks. We talk about it. Oh, God can do anything. We use His name. In the name of Jesus, I'm not doing that. We use his name. We talk about him. We tell everybody else how good he is and how this and how that. But we never yeah. move from where we are. We're in the same position, same place. This time next year, be the same place. Still asking God for the same thing. I'm sorry, but I thought we just read where he said, Jesus said, whatsoever. Whatsoever you ask in my name, my Father will do it. I heard somebody say this just this morning. I was listening to him. Somebody preached a little bit right before I got ready. And he said, you know, the problem with people not wanting to pray is because they don't get prayers answered. Let God start answering your prayer. You can't pray enough. When God starts answering your prayer, and let me tell you something, it's not God's fault if you're not getting answers. We're not in the name of Jesus. We are not answering. We think he's not answering if he didn't answer like we wanted him to answer. But when we get in the name of Jesus, then we're going to start making some progress. Then we'll start seeing God's hand move in places in our life. Amen. The anointing in you will not just go on about your day-to-day -day lives while you constantly hear threats from the enemy to take out everything that he wants to take out. There's something about being in Christ that calls for battle against all that is wrong. Right. There's something in you right. that you cannot sit around and hear people cussing and right. acting like right. the world and doing all that stuff. You cannot sit in the middle of that comfortably without when you are in Christ. Right. It is like it goes against everything right. in you. It turns you inside out. There is something that calls you to battle against that
I mean, have you heard people say that? I know I'm not going right. to do this or do that. Can I tell you something? The anointing, the anointing is the ability, the God-given ability. The first anointing that you're going to receive is to be in Christ. To listen and to receive instruction. We can't be anointed to be kings and queens and have authority and do all this if we can't be anointed to listen to God and take instruction. That's number one. David was anointed and sent right back to the field. He didn't take the throne that day. You know what he did? God anointed him and sent him right back out there and his brother stopped. We're the ones on the battlefield. Yeah. You can get on back out there and tend to the right. yeah. But the anointing shows up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The anointing shows up yes, when the enemy needs to be defeated. Right. Amen. You can play. You can talk about it. But the anointing will not cower down to the right. threat. Because you know you're in the name. Right. You're not fighting me. You're fighting my Father. Who has all power. We will rise up and say, I come to you in the name. I come to you in the name. Say it with me. I come to you in the name. I come to you in the name. I come to you in the name. In the name of Jesus. You're not fighting the old man. I love this scripture right here. Colossians 3 and 3 says that man is dead. Huh? Yes, I'm glad that old man is dead. The one that used to run and cry and be depressed. Think I just can't handle it. I just can't do this. I'm just so, I can't, I can't do it. And the world's against me. And, and what am I going to do? And this trouble comes and it just knocks me down and, Here's what he said, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. How are you dead? When you receive, when you repent and you receive the blood of Jesus, you put on Christ. And you're baptized and raised up. The old man is yes. dead and the new man is alive and you have put on Christ and you are in Christ Jesus. For ye are dead and your life. You know what that means? Everything I'm going to face. Everything that this life will hold. <laughs> everything that this life is hid in Christ. Who am I hid from? The devil. Right. I'm hid from the enemy. You know what? He can't find me unless God wants him to find me. I'm hid. I'm hid. I'm covered. I'm hid. There's a scripture that said Jesus was talking about the Jesus. He said, oh, so many times I would gather, would have gathered you like a hen gathers her chicks. I would have gathered you, but you would not. He wants you to be in him and be dead to the old man. Dead to the old man. And when, when we need to make sure that we let the devil know you're not fighting the old man. He's dead. He's gone. This is a new day. This is a new thing. I am in Christ Jesus. When you fight me, you fight in God. I'm not sin sick, broke down, beat down like I used to be. Amen. I am dead to that old man. And this new man is alive in Christ. I can now pray in Jesus' name and expect the answer according to the value of his name. I can pray with great and excited expectation. He has given me his name to use in the bank of heaven. I can withdraw 
Scripture says lay up treasures in heaven. How do you do that? In Christ Jesus. We don't have a thing he needs or a thing he wants except our will. And we lay up treasures in heaven, not by works, lest any man should boast. But to be submitted to him and become in Christ Jesus. We're about to close Philippians 4 and 19. I said we could use, we are going to, it's like going to the bank over here. Ben's name is on our checking account. My name is on our checking account. And I can go over there and draw out whatever I need to draw out or do whatever I need to do. I can do business because my last name is Brown. My name is Miseries Ben Brown. Whatever he has, I have. Whatever he has, I have. Whatever God has, you have. In the bank of heaven, when we go to God and we ask for God to, this is what he says, Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to what? According to his, his, his. He is not looking at your bank account. He is not looking at your ability. He is not looking at your inability. He is not looking at your circumstance. He's not moved by that. He is not moved by that because his word said that he would supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why do we have to be in Christ Jesus? Is because it's the only way that we get what we need. Come on. He paid the price for me and you. He paid the price. And he redeemed us. So when he paid the price and covered us with his blood, we are in Christ Jesus when we submit our will to him and we come to the Father and say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I am in his name. And here's what I need. You know what? Sometimes we don't know what we need. We just have to say, God, I don't even know what to ask for. But according to your riches and glory, I need this need supplied. Whatever it is, because I'm in his name. I'm not going to just say it. I'm in it. I want to walk it out. I have the anointing to be a child of God. You have the anointing, if you want it, to be a child. The word says to become sons and daughters of God. To become. And where we get messed up is in the becoming. Because to become means it's a process. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes it's not going to change overnight. It's not going to change just like that. It's not like a drive through to become. You have the power to become. Get in the name and watch God give you the head of your giant. There are people sitting in this place right here this morning that you are facing your own giant. There is something in your life that has become such a giant to you, it threatens you every day. It talks to you every day. It, it runs you down every day. It makes you feel like a failure every day. You are facing that every single day that you live. And God said, all I want you to do is get in my name. In my name. The reason you have a haven't had a successful battle with this giant before is because you have used my name, but you haven't been in my name. You haven't come out to battle this thing in my name. You've used what other people said about it. You've talked about it and how you can do this and you're going to do that and you get up tomorrow and he starts talking to you and you go right back down. Until David was anointed. And he went back to that sheep dog. And can you imagine while he was still, you may have to go back to work tomorrow. Yeah. You may have to go back into that place you don't really care that much for. You may have to go back. But don't you let where you are 
make you forget your anointing. Don't you let the job that you do make you forget who you are. Don't you let somebody around you tell you you're just this and you're just that or you can't do this or you can't do that. Let me tell you something. When he went back and he picked up the pitchfork and he picked up the show, he didn't feel like no king. Amen. And I'm sure when his daddy was sending him to the battlefield with cheese and water and wine and whatever they had to have, he was sending him. And, and, and don't you know that probably somewhere in David's mind at some point, he thought, I, I, I've been anointed. Why am I still doing this? Come on now. Why am I still? There's more in me than this than loading up a donkey and going down and trying to supply somebody else's name. There's more in me than this. I feel it, God. I know it's in there, God. I know I've been anointed for more than this. I know there's more to me than what they see. Come on. Yes. And I can imagine that God said. There's going to be a giant. And they're all the one. But for this, I have anointed you. And it was time on this day for them to realize that David wasn't just a little ruddy shepherd boy. Nobody knew that David had slayed the bear and the lion. Nobody even knew it. Nobody even cared. You just tend the sheep. Nobody even cared. Nobody even cared. People may not care what you do. They may not care that you've been sober for three months. They may not care that you've been. You, they don't know the struggle. They don't know. But what they don't realize is that there was an anointing put on you to become. David was becoming. Becoming king. Becoming. Look at somebody say, I'm becoming. I'm becoming. I'm becoming. It's a little at a time. It's a little here and it's a little there, but I'm becoming. I'm coming on. And that anointing will keep me in the name. So at the time that my giant, one day you're going to get up. <laughs> one day you're going to get up and say, no more. You're going to stand up and say no more. It's over. Today. Today is the day that I take your head. Today is the day because I'm in the name of Jesus. And God on this day is going to give me the head of my enemy, the head of my giant. That thing that has tormented me, that thing has talked to me, that thing that has drugged me around, that thing that has made me ashamed of myself, that thing that has kept me from being all I could be. And today I am under the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost and I see myself as in the name of Jesus. I come to you and I come to you with the power of the sword of the word of God and I will take your head off and feed it to the fowls of the enemy so that you will never speak to me that way again. Stand with us.